Hi, developers. I'm Evan Vichy. I'm the community manager at Tatum. And today we're joined by Josh Kreitz. He's a partner at Cello who does developer relations. Uh, Cello is a blockchain that is aiming to create a new platform to connect people globally and bring financial stability to those who need it most. And uh, we at Tatum, we're a big fan of the blockchain and we're really happy to have you with us today, Josh. So thanks for joining us. So how are you doing? Doing pretty well. So what's your background? Uh, you know, what is the Josh story? Yeah, yeah. So um, like many of my friends in crypto, um, I don't have a background. Um, well, I didn't go to school for computer science or um, I don't have much of a background in crypto. I actually went to school for uh, chemistry and biology. And then after that, I went and, and traveled around for a bit. I, I worked in the ski industry for a while, um, which was a lot of fun. But after being there for like five years, I realized uh, it wasn't a place to like build a, a career really, like to build the life that I wanted. So um, I started exploring alternatives, like just new subjects to learn about and, and build a career around. And I I'd, I'd heard about Ethereum on a podcast and the narrative of like building on the world computer was really inspiring to me. Um, I, I didn't know how to code or anything at the time. So that actually inspired me to learn web development, um, spent about a year doing that, got in got my first web dev job um, and I joined Consensus shortly after that. Doing that, I actually got to go to DevCon 5 in Osaka in 2019. Um, and at DevCon 5, I saw Sep, one of the co-founders of Cello, give a talk about the five features of money. This, this idea that uh, you and I can just deploy a token on Ethereum or, or Cello right now um, and distribute it to a bunch of our friends. And in the next 20 minutes, we all now have this thing, this currency, if we can convince our friends to start using it as a currency, it is a legitimate currency. Um, that's a super new thing. The lower, the barrier to entry is like much lower. So yeah, we're starting to see this, this design space really explored. Um, and yeah, that was just really inspiring to me. I wanted to go work with people that were like thinking in that, in that design space. So um, yeah, I joined Cello. It was the beginning of 2020. So I've been here for a bit over a year. You were already at Consensus. I mean, how is Celo different from other blockchains? What really drew you to Celo specifically? Yeah, one of the main things that drew me to Celo is the focus on usability. The, the mission of Celo, um, which is creating a financial system that creates the conditions of prosperity for everybody. Um, and to create prosperity for everybody, it needs to be usable by everybody. Um, and one of the early promises of Bitcoin was, was banking the unbanked. Um, it was one of the early ideas and we haven't really seen that happen. Um, so Celo is really trying to achieve that. And what advantages does Celo have? I mean, it's, it's related to Ethereum originally, but what advantages does it have over Ethereum? Yeah, so Celo, yeah, I, I almost started telling the story, but uh, now, now's the time. Um, mm -hmm. The founders were looking at actually seeing if it was possible to create Celo like on an existing blockchain, and whether that would be Ethereum or, or another another chain. Um, but after some user research, like realized that they couldn't provide a experience that users expect, given the infrastructure that was out there, um, with the needs of like decentralization, censorship resistance. Um, and yeah, just transparency. So they realized that they needed to develop their own chain. Um, some of these features that they realized um, were necessary or like that, that people expected were like just speed. Um, mm -hmm. Ethereum block times are around 15 seconds. Um, Bitcoin block times are around 10 minutes. Um, Cello block times are around five seconds. Um, so you can get a you can just see your transactions processing much, much faster. Um, also just like, how do you access the network in a trustless, um, in a trustless way? Celo is designing ultralight clients that are capable of running on low end Android devices. And once we have like our full, um, Plumo is our like ultralight client that will sync the network like very quickly. It's actually, once it's fully built out, it will be like 1.7 million times faster than like existing light clients. Um, it's using zero knowledge proofs. Validators are publishing every day. So with a minimal amount of data, 
a, a phone can just get the current state of the network. Um, so this just increases accessibility. People without desktops or laptop computers or even um, higher end smartphones can, can access the network in a way that's, that's trustless. And um, yeah, we, we don't necessarily appreciate this as much in countries where we have like robust internet infrastructure and um, don't have to worry about um, maybe governments or corporations like censoring data because we just trust, we can trust them reliably, but in, in our target markets, in our target audience, like these assumptions are less certain. Um, we're really looking at serving people in the global South. So like Africa, South America. So, and, and what kinds of applications in these, um, in these areas of the world do you think are, have, are, are the most promising or the most, yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of the projects that I've seen get the most traction are like just simple like remittance um, networks. Like there's tons of money that flows through re current remittance networks and the fees are like surprisingly high. Um, and even like with the established crypto um, projects that are targeting remittances like cash in and cash out options are really difficult to navigate. Um, like it's really, yeah, it's really hard to get your money into crypto from fiat and then from crypto back into, into fiat and then in the destination. But yeah, remittances are huge. Um, honestly, it's just like very simple uh, payments. Um, people still really aren't using crypto for payments. Even like I've been using Ethereum for a while and I've, I don't buy very many things with, with the credit yeah. I have. You do developer relations. Um, what exactly does that entail? Yeah. Yeah. So developer relations is, um, it's a number of things. So like lately I've been doing a lot of uh, support with, with partners um, to just help them integrate with Celo, um, migrate to Celo or help Ethereum developers understand how Celo is different and how like what advantages there might be to building on Celo instead of Ethereum um, or any other blockchain for that matter. So there's a lot of education is one big side of it. Um, then, then the other side of developer relations is actually just talking to developers that are building products and then communicating their needs back to our engineering team so we can make the developer experience better for everybody building on Celo. So uh, yeah, tell me more about what's new at Celo. What, uh, yeah, what's happening there? Yeah, so um, we just had our one year anniversary of Celo Mainnet. So Mainnet launched on Earth Day 2020. Um, so yeah, that was about a month ago, a year and a month ago is when we launched. Um, another thing is we announced a partnership with Deutsche Telekom. Um, they're investing in Celo and becoming a validator on the Celo network. Um, and they're a very large um, telecom company. So this will like just aligns very nicely with our like, mobile first approach in terms of reaching people on their on their mobile devices and then mm -hmm. also partnering with a, a large telecom company. Um, but the thing that I'm most excited about is probably the donut hard fork, which activated yesterday afternoon. Um, and there's some there are some cool like cryptographic primitives that we uh, launched in that hard fork, which will enable um, new elliptic curve signatures, which will help with building bridges, as well as some new hash functions, which also helps with bridges. So um, at Celo, we're focused on connecting with existing chains. So we're working on a bridge with Cosmos. Um, we're working on bridges with Ethereum. And we also have um, the optics bridge design that will actually help us build bridges to every blockchain. That brings me to yeah, a big question here. So what are, what do you think are some pressing issues in the blockchain space um, that are kind of inhibiting blockchain adoption? Yeah. Yeah, I mentioned um, usability and just like general user experience is a big one. Mm -hmm. uh, that like ties into what I mentioned earlier about like on and off ramps. Um, it's hard to get your money into crypto or like out of crypto mm -hmm. uh, 
just for, for the average user. And my second point on pressing issues in the blockchain space is, is education. Sure. Um, it's just like communicating like like why this is significant. Well, not not only that, um, it's education on like many fronts. Mm-hmm. It's like, why is this significant? How can crypto actually help you or how can it help other people? Um, but also just like how to do the things. Like the things are complicated, so people need education. So how does, you know, I guess coding for blockchains differ from web development in terms of difficulty, I would say. In terms of difficulty, um, I don't find it to be more difficult. Mm -hmm. Um, It's just a whole bunch of new concepts you have to learn. Mm -hmm. So like it took me a year and a half to learn the concepts relevant for web development. And like, granted, there's a lot of similarity in terms of concepts like going from from zero to one for web development and then transitioning to blockchain um, i don't have to relearn programming languages but there's like a whole bunch of concepts in terms of like what the data structures are and how information is moving in the network and how you're interacting um like what the primitives are um so there's yeah there's just like a lot of there's a lot of new language as well um cryptography is pretty important in, in blockchain networks um, especially when you're like going to the basics of like how Bitcoin works, like why, why it is how it is, um, and then onto Ethereum and, and the following. So um, yeah, it's, it's just more stuff to learn, which can be um, a hurdle for, well, is a hurdle for, for everybody. And something that surprises me consistently with, with blockchain development is like new people are coming into the space and like they'll have no programming experience at all they're like oh i want to learn blockchain development but like i have i don't even know how to code um and like when i'm writing documentation i assume people like know how to have been using the terminal like have all the software installed already um and they're like starting from a specific point but it's like there's a lot of people that are landing on these pages that um haven't seen seen this stuff before um and it's it's really hard to like put yourself back in the shoes of somebody that like like myself five years ago when I hadn't seen seen code and I'm like actually trying to get something up and running. So what's on the roadmap for Cello? I did want to mention mm. uh, we have Cello Camp badge mm. board coming up. Um, actually applications are currently open. It'll be open until August 24th. Um, so Cello Camp is an incubator program for, for new projects that are curious about blockchain development and building on Cello. And it's, it's, it's an incubator that will help teams um, kind of like flesh out an idea, find product market fit, and also like get to a proven concept or an MVP product that mm-hmm. they can, uh, yeah, then take forward and look for additional support to keep going. Cool. So, um, well, What's the age range for a, a camp like that? Oh, we've had kids that are still in college and we've had people that have um, been working on projects for um, for years and a couple things that like we didn't really touch on, but I just think our core sure, features sure. Cello that just want to make sure everybody uh, knows about. Um, so Cello has um, native stable assets. So we have a, a Cello dollar. Um, mm-hmm. We have an on-chain reserve that's backing all of our our stable assets. So we have a Cello dollar as well as a Cello euro. Um, mm-hmm. Cello Euro was recently launched. Cello Dollar has been live since last summer. Um, and we have, as part of the core protocol, like an easy way to expand this set of stable currencies. When we say stable currencies, we mean peg to fiat. Mm-hmm. We have a system that's um, providing this peg. And yeah, we're looking at expanding this. Um, we actually have an on-chain governance system that allows the community to submit proposals to expand this. Just out of my own curiosity, actually, how does the reserve system work like to, to maintain a stable value of the currency? Yeah, so basically we just, with the reserve, we're making sure that um, all of the stable currency in circulation is, there's like more reserve currency um, mm-hmm. in the reserve than is actually, like every stable coin is backed by this reserve currency. And I think Sure. It's over collateralized by a very, very large amount right now. Um, okay. I want to say over 10x. Um, and we actually have a number of currency, like cryptocurrencies in our reserve. So we have um, Bitcoin, 
Ether, Celo is the main one. Um, we also have Dai. So like we have currencies from other networks in our reserve as well. Um, part of our initiative around bridges is to make this reserve trustless in the sense we will have essentially Celo wrapped Bitcoin in our reserve and Celo wrapped Ether in our reserve and Celo wrapped Dai. Currently we have um, a custodian that's managing those for us, but it's still verifiable on chain. Like you can look at the custodial account and be like, okay, yes, there's X million dollars of Bitcoin in the seller reserve. There's X million dollars worth of Celo and X million dollars worth of Ether. Um, so yeah, we have an interesting uh, mechanism that allows you to just send on-chain assets to a reserve or exchange contract. So if you send Celo to our exchange contract, um, the reserve, like Celo will actually go into the reserve and then it will mint new Celo dollars for you. So, um, well, sweet. Well, I think that's all I've got uh, from my side. Um, if you have any questions or want to add anything, we can do that. Yeah, I've got a couple questions. Um, yeah, just for, remind me how uh, Tatum is, is working with Celo. Like, what are all the features? I know when I first jumped in, I saw some really cool integrations with token, but um, yeah, what's sure. the whole, whole list? Well, yeah, I mean, so far what we have is uh, support for any ERC-20 token on Celo um, and s support for Celo tokens as well and both of your stable coins. Um, and we've also got a couple of pre-made smart contract NFTs, um, one normal NFT and one that actually pays out royalties every time it changes hands. So all of those are kind of directly supported within Tatum. Um, yeah, and then with the standard stuff that we have for all the other blockchains, like um, generating wallets and private keys and of the, the common functions that you'd need to work on the blockchain. Yes. So how have you seen like the Tatum community using the API and like building? Yeah. Actually, I mean, basically the same way you were saying you want people to be using it, which is great. Um, so we've, a lot of the interest in Zello has been coming from uh, projects in Africa for different payment solutions and remittance payments and stuff like that. So it's a lot of use of the stable coin. Well, cool. Well, um, I think that's all I've got. Um, and I wanted to yeah, thank you for taking some time out to talk to us. And we're really excited about everything that you guys have in store and happy to be working with you. Um, so, and for everyone watching, thanks for watching. Um, we'll put uh, links down below uh, in the description to Cello and Tatum and uh, anything else relevant we've mentioned. And uh, so until next time, uh, thanks for joining us and happy coding. Mm -hmm.